Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is a look at the market preview for the coming session. This is for Wednesday, February 12th, 2014. We had a pretty decent up session across the board today uh, with uh, the uh, SP futures up uh, 18 on the day and the, and the uh, NASDAQ side up 35. So pretty decent broad base uh, support for the market. The uh, market internals were also pretty good. They really basically just improved all day making a 1,700 net advancers on New York, which is real strong, and, a th and more than 1,000 on, uh, on the NASDAQ side. Last market preview, we spent a fair amount of time talking about the, uh, the absolute levels, so we're not going to do that this time. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of gloss over the absolute levels and then get right down and uh, dig down into the market internals and uh, take a good look there under the, and see what's going, under the, going on under the hood in the market. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the levels, and then we'll get onto the market internals. All right, here's a look at the ES on the day. The ES uh, did uh, penetrate the uh, 50 DMA and closed above it on a closing basis, which is a sign of strength. We did we did pause and find some uh, some resistance at the 6 A's level, which is where we closed. So the 6 A's level is uh, it's a pretty big level. It's uh, as we talked about as the breakout from uh, the last run to the upside, and it was also used as as a uh, support area on the on the fallback. So definitely the uh, the uh, <laughs> Excuse me, I'm still sick here, guys. Just uh, bear with me. I apologize. The 6 days level is still kind of an area that's being uh, going to be traded here a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see that in play again tomorrow if we release to the upside. The uh, 7 days level at 1843, 1844 is going to come into to play. To the downside, uh, what we're going to see is we're a little bit of a little bit of support from the previous day's high, but much more important support at the uh, the 10 EMA on the short term basis. And then if things get really nasty and start to roll to the downside, that 4 ace level at uh, 1750 will come into play. NASDAQ side of the market, here's the big news. Take a look at this. Look at the, look at the close here. Close is within shooting distance of the previous high close on the move. So essentially all we've done here is had a, had a retrace held above the active static trend line and then driven back up to the previous high in only three candles. Only three candles up here in the secret exhaustion phase to the upside. So we could be talking about higher levels here in the NASDAQ side. Next level, if we break out to the top side, is 36.72. To the downside, the 50 DMA will coincide with the 10 EMA, and that'll be uh, important support if, uh, if things start to take a turn for the, uh, for the worse or to the downside. All right, so let's take a look at the, uh, the key market internals. We're gonna start with the internals and then we're going to move on to the uh, to the intermarkets and uh, see what uh, they kind of have to say as far as uh, the the advance continuing, or or if we're going to start to uh, start to run out of gas here. The uh, 10 day 10 day trend got extremely oversold on this last move. We're uh, back down within within the normal trading bands, which is which is uh, pretty typical and expected. But keep in mind here that there's a lot of room here before we get anywhere near overbought on the 10 day trend. So if the bulls want to come in here and exert themselves, flex their muscles and take things to the upside, there's plenty of room to go to the upside here. So uh, there's plenty, plenty of space before we get to the uh, over overbought uh, area of 0 0.85. Alright, so uh, the other key internal here is we're going to take a look at the advanced declines. The advanced declines um, are definitely mixed. We're mixed in that, in that the uh, NASDAQ side really started to get kind of skinny and skinny means that there's just a, a smaller and smaller amount of stocks doing the heavy lifting and really carrying the averages to uh, to new highs. You can see as we had this uh, this sharp decline to the downside here, we haven't even retraced the whole thing yet. While at the New York side, we're actually right at the old high here. So the New York side, while it's moving slower and uh, a little bit more begrudgingly, actually internally by measured by the cumulative advanced decline line is still pretty healthy. I think this is one of the key things that keeps buyers coming back into the market successfully for now, being able to buy dips. The dips that you do not want to buy, the dips that are deadly to buy, are when the New York Stock Exchange side of the, of the uh, cumulative advanced decline line is heading to the downside and losing its relative strength. We have not had that condition yet in the whole move to the upside here. We had a precursor of it and a little taste of it on the NASDAQ side, but it didn't spill over into the New York side. Remember, keep in mind, the New York side is the one that really drives the bus. If the New York side starts to roll over, get out of the way, 
full-on correction is coming. But for now, uh, this indicator is still healthy. All right now, let's move on to the intermarkets, which is uh, intermarket means you know, one market against another, and we're going to take some uh, some look at take some looks at some relative performance. Here's a look at the S&P versus the TLT. We had a we had this high water mark up here at the upper regression channel here boundary, and rolled to the downside in favor of the TLT over the S&P. We climaxed here at about 16 in the ratio, and have uh, we recouped and now definitely without a doubt set up a uh, higher low here in the bounce of this key ratio so the upside target is going to be uh, a retest of the lower boundary which we've clearly lost but uh, but for now this uh, this metric is pointing to the upside with uh, stocks in favor over bonds right now here's a look at the uh, the Dow goal ratio which is another risk on risk off measurement this is probably more classic than the uh, than the uh, bond equity cross that we just looked at. This one right now is fairly indecisive. Uh, the uh, S&P versus the TLT was definitely uh, pretty decisive uh, short term in favor of equities over bonds, but right now the uh, the uh, gold Dow Gold ratio is really not that decisive. We had this uh, this run up out of this triangle to the, to the top side here, this failure and breach of the triangle boundary to the downside and right now we're just grinding in the same area so right now let me zoom in here a little bit for you right now we don't have quite the same appetite for equities versus gold gold's actually been been performing relatively well so right now there's really no relative performance advantage of gold versus uh... stocks we've uh, had kind of a, a, a pretty much a parity move so far with some pretty decent movement in gold if we do break out back above and reclaim this little channel here to the downside, that would definitely be an indication that the old highs are going to be in play here in the Dow Gold ratio. But for now, this is kind of indecisive and is not really kind of confirming what we're seeing in the S&P TLT cross. All right, here's a look at the NDX versus the S&P on the ratio. The NDX still has pretty good, pretty good relative strength. We broke out above this this key channel here that's been in play for quite some time and we're actually still continuing to make to make uh, progress to the upside and uh, progress to the upside in the NDX is almost always welcome as long as the uh, cumulative advance decline line is not rolling over in the uh, S on the New York side of the market which it is not right now but here's a look at the oil services versus the oil futures the oil futures have had a couple of uh, trips lower in this move but the oil services have really held up fairly decently and has some pretty decent relative performance and, and uh, you can see that what that's done is really buoyed the uh, the decline here in the uh, in the overall um, crude futures. Crude futures really generally tend to follow what the OSX is doing, not the other way around as a lot of people uh, actually believe. So right now we're still heading, heading positively here as far as the uh, of as far as the crude futures, we're kind of gaming that 100 area. If we break out above this little mini trend line here on the oil services, and the oil services develop any upside momentum, expect, expect to see some uh, distance gained above that 100 level in crude futures. All right, here's a new ratio chart that we're, we're going to be tracking this year just to, uh, just to really kind of dig down uh, one level deeper under the market. This is going to be the, uh, the gold and VIX relative performance chart. What what generally happens is is when things get a little little sketchy and and traders on balance are skeptical of the market, they're really looking to really lighten up on the assets that can hurt them. What they tend to do then is is buy protection as far as uh, insurance in the form of either either outright volatility uh, bets to the upside, or they buy they buy by uh, by puts to uh, insure their portfolios, and when you do that, you see a, a bump up in the VIX. Also, you also tend to see a rotation out of uh, the more the more uh, economically sensitive asset classes, uh, especially uh, when you're talking about gold. Gold is not necessarily an economically sensitive class, but it is oftentimes a safe haven. Is and when you see uh, uh, kind of the VIX start to move, and then you also see gold moving in unison with it. That means 
that maybe the VIX has moved enough and, and people have enough protection in the VIX and now they're also starting to put money into gold as a kind of a secondary hedge. Gold's generally not usually a primary hedge, it's usually more a secondary hedge that people are thinking a little bit longer term with. Longer term meaning uh, more than one option expiration cycle. I'm not talking about, you know, you know, a multi-year type move uh, by any stretch. So when you see them both moving in the same direction over a sustained period of time, meaning more than one option cycle, that generally means that there's uh, some real fear out there. Right now we're really not seeing evidence of that. You can see how they're both moving in unison here uh, back in 2011. 2012 they were essentially unwinding to the downside as they continued to pound stocks higher. We had a pretty pretty good pop up in the VIX here and it quickly retreated but we're starting to see some uh, some some movement back up in gold here and we'll uh, potentially see some uh, a crossover here where we could start to see some uh, some secondary positions being put on right now that's not that's not the case but it definitely could be later if we start to see gold turning up here crossing above the VIX and then the VIX starts to move up in unison with it then we're going to really start to see evidence of uh, some risk being taken off of the market. So this is definitely something that we're going to be watching going forward. All right, lastly, I want, lastly we want to talk about the uh, the performance of the uh, individual sectors on the day. Everything was pretty much positive today. Uh, definitely the uh, the big the big winner today was XAU. The oil services was real strong. Uh, XOI uh, traded really, really well too, which uh, is a little bit more uh, uh, gas sensitive than the oil services, the OSX. Um, the SOX traded pretty well, as did the BTK. Uh, the laggers were really the uh, the consumer uh, staples. The airlines were kind of weak. Housing sector was a little bit weak, which is a little bit of, co of a cause for concern, but but nothing too much yet. The uh, transports were okay, up 1.115%. Would have preferred to see them uh, score a little bit better in the rankings today, but uh, but definitely across the board today. Pretty strong bounce. Keep in mind that if this is going to be a bounce, this is starting to get a little bit long in the tooth, and that's definitely something you need to be aware of. Uh, we had three days up, which oftentimes is met with selling as of today's current session, today's uh, the most recent day session, and it didn't really get met with any selling. Uh, so that's definitely kind of a coup for the bulls in that uh, there was really nobody willing to, to, uh, to start to lighten up and and prepare to take the other side of the tape. So it's just a little nuance there to take into your trading uh, scenario, scenario for tomorrow. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSight. Uh, I would appreciate it if you enjoy this video. Please thumb it up and like it or give it a plus one. And uh, as always, thanks for listening.